G'day guys. I'm going to be talking to council member Francisco Moya about an innovative program that he set up last year with soccer legend David Villa. The program is for children who are immigrants. These kids have been separated from their mums and dads by ICE. This year, David Villa's program is virtual given COVID-19. So, um, Councilman, now could you just tell me about the Academy a little bit more and your involvement and the Hispanic sure. Federation's involvement? Uh, I've been a, a big supporter of DV7, a uh, big fan of David Villa uh, for, for many years. I'm a big FC Barcelona fan, so you know who couldn't love David Villa uh, for all that he did for my club? Mm -hmm. But when he came here to New York, uh, you know, we developed this great uh, uh, relationship uh, as probably the only elected official in the city that's into football. Uh, you know, we, we, we kind of like really got to know one another uh, very well. And he started doing a lot of free clinics uh, in the uh, schools in my uh, district. Yeah. Uh, it was pretty incredible that, you know, a guy like, uh, you know, world-renowned football player, you know, is coming to Corona Queens and spending four hours with these young kids you know, uh, we have a lot of major league sports teams in the city of New York. I've never seen any one of their uh, stars from the Knicks, the Mets, the Yankees uh, ever spend four hours with kids and take pictures with everyone that wanted to take pictures with him and sign autographs. He really had this great passion, not only for the sport, but about how to teach that to the kids uh, here in the United States. Mm -hmm. And as we kept evolving a little bit, uh, we saw things that were changing uh, here in this country, uh, especially dealing with uh, uh, immigrant children, uh, those that were being separated from their parents uh, at the borders. Uh, it's something that I'm very passionate about. Um, they were being housed in uh, different states uh, further away from their um, uh, parents. Mm -hmm. And we had several here in the city of New York. And it could be very traumatizing for any child to be separated from their parent, let alone being in another country in a different state than where your parent is. Uh, we needed to do something. And the only thing I can think of is the one unifier for most children that are coming from South and Central America is football. Mm. Uh, what, what better way to bring people together uh, then by having them participate in a program. So I started thinking about uh, what I could do. Uh, I funded this program through the Hispanic Federation uh, by giving $150,000 to the organization um, to really organize uh, all of the uh, children that were uh, here, that were separated at the border, uh, but also kind of expanded that a little bit to kids that are in foster care as well. Um, you know, we know that this is a great ability to sort of bring them out of their shells. Uh, it's a great team uh, sport. And then you bring in an icon like David Villa into the mix. Uh, it really just uh, brightens their day. I mean, I was there on the first day and you should see like their eyes just, you know, can't believe that, you know, David Villa is in front of them. And he has great coaches. They're teaching them the fundamentals of football. Um, and they were, we were able to fund this by, by uh, uh, having practices twice a week. Uh, we were busing them uh, to the field. Uh, at the end of the program, uh, we provided them with certificates of accomplishment. Uh, I think it really brought this uh, great spirit of what, how football is a real unifier uh, mm. throughout the globe. Uh, and when you have someone like David Villa, uh, who really cares and is passionate about children, uh, it really makes this a, a, a great story and a wonderful program that has proven to be successful. Um, so Councilman, how many children uh, were, were involved in last year's program and was it, which particular park did they go to that they were bused to? Yeah, so uh, I believe we had, and Ryan, you can correct me if I'm wrong, it was like a, a, a a little over a hundred uh, mm -hmm. uh, participants. I don't have the number off the top of my head, mm -hmm. um, but since they were they were all housed in different parts of the city. Yeah, uh, I represent Queens. Uh, getting park permits are extremely extremely difficult, even for someone uh, in city government. But we were able to manage to get um, uh, permits uh, in some fields in Queens, 
Uh, we provided free bus service uh, so that all the kids can come to this one field um, mm -hmm. and then had uh, coaches that came in. You know, the, the fact is we also had uh, Emery, who was coaching Arsenal at the time, uh, come into a soccer clinic for these young kids. You know, uh, David brings his star power and he brings like uh, world-renowned uh, football coaches to, to teach these young kids the fundamentals. Uh, uh -huh. it, it really, it really was, uh, was, was inspiring for, for me to see that, uh, just because of the reaction and the, the joy that a lot of these kids, uh, were able to get. Um, and I think that that's why we are continuing to expand the program now. Uh, and I think we need it like now more than ever, uh, mm. to continue to keep these kids, uh, active, um, while we're in this, uh, sort of new normal, um, that we have going on. Uh, here and of course the globe. So, Councilman, how many times do they kind of meet? Do they, you know, meet and practice ten times? Any sort of thoughts? So, uh, it's. Uh, I think that it's still going to be twice a week, um, and they're a they're developing it. Um, well, we used to do it twice a week already. Mm. Uh, it was Wednesdays and Saturdays that they had that they had um, the practice. I think Ryan put up uh, 126 kids were were uh, part of the program uh, last year, and I mm. think we've kind of uh, expanded that a little bit more for for this year. It, it's grown a little bit, mm. um, and I think the 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 great thing about this is that as we are still now in coming out of this pause here in New York, um, many of the uh, Parks are still not going to be open for such activity as, as soccer. Uh, uh, what, what we can do is to keep them active. You know, a lot of times in the summer, uh, kids go to the beach, they go to the pool. Those are all going to be closed. Parks mm -hmm. are going to be uh, very difficult to kind of manage something like this. Uh, we want to keep them active. We want to keep them engaged. Uh, we don't want them to lose from the progress that they made uh, up here. And I think this, this, uh, kind of new normal that we're in where we're all zooming right now and having kind of these conversations uh, uh, this way. It, it's also a good way for these coaches to continue to teach these kids, have some kind of interaction uh, with our young children here uh, that need this, uh, especially during this time that can be, um, you know, uh, create a lot of anxiety, even for adults, let alone, mm. you know, uh, children that uh, are not uh, with their with their families right now. So uh, I think that this is one of the reasons why uh, we really want to uh, continue to promote this program. And, you know, very grateful for uh, uh, David Villa uh, and his commitment to seeing this through. Um, you know, uh, he might have retired from football, but he hasn't retired from, uh, you know, sharing his passion uh, to the world. And I think here is just a great example of the kind of individual uh, that he is, mm. that, that is all the way in Spain, and he's caring about uh, these kids that have come to America, separated from uh, their parents, uh, and he's making sure that this continues to, to go on. It's a testament to, to the character uh, of who he is. And just last of all, do you anticipate the club actually playing next year, as was hoped? And do you anticipate a stadium by next year, as was hoped? You know, had you asked me this uh, two months ago, my, my answer would have been much different. Mm. Um, but we, we just don't know uh, what's to come when, it, when it's uh, the issues that deal with large venues right now. Um, it's going to be very difficult, I think, for a lot of people are just trying to figure this out. Uh, Major League Soccer still hasn't figured out how they're going to play uh, here. The NBA, uh, will that have crowds? You know, all of these things are still up in the air, I think, until we get some better direction on what's happening uh, in sort of containing the pandemic. Uh, testing is going to be uh, really critical for us here uh, in New York uh, to be able to reach uh, that level where we can start saying we're going to start opening up venues such as uh, soccer stadiums. Um, but I think the area that's been impacted the most uh, by this virus in the entire country is Corona Queens, uh, mm. you know, right where we're from, uh, where we, you know, hope to have our, our team one day be playing here. Um, it, it set us back, um, but I think we're, we're, we're optimistic 
Uh, we really want to make sure that we're doing everything right so that uh, one for the fans and also for the team, uh, we want to make sure that everything is done appropriately uh, and we manage it correctly uh, as, as we move forward. Right. Okay, great. Well, listen, thank you very much for your time, Councilman, and I'll, I'll be thank seeing you. you in about an hour, I guess. All right, you got it.